Hello YouTube and welcome back to another Dare to Game video. Today we're playing Elden Ring and we're doing another weapons guide and today's is top five best thrusting swords. So this is going to be your rapiers, your, you know, light, obviously, thrusting swords made primarily for your prisoner class uh, is what they oftentimes go with. So I like to do this in sort of a light sword dueling build or also a obviously uh, light sword uh, and sign build. So if you're using your, uh, your sign ring on your left hand, that also goes well with this. I personally like pairing it with the dagger just because it it fills in my inner musketeer needs. Uh, so we're going to go through all of these, uh, all of the five best thrusting swords in the game, and I'll give you their damage stats, uh, as well as their defensive stats, where to find them, any special abilities if they have them, all that sort of stuff. Uh, I just want to say, these are all measured, all things being equal, so stats are maxed out, all of the swords are maxed, so none of these are inaccurate comparisons to each other. So now let's just dive on in and start off with number five, Rogier's Rapier. So as you can see, this is a pretty intricate looking sword with a, uh, it's actually a little bit more rare for a rapier to have a cruciform style but it does happen sometimes throughout history a nice thin long blade uh, actually looks decently realistic especially for a thrusting rapier because they weren't necessarily all super flat if they were specifically designed for thrusting that way you could have a, a narrower blade like this at this length without it losing its rigidity so it's actually not a bad design for the sword as far as the stats go on this one we have a max attack power of 633 and an average guarded damage negation of 34.5 so both of those are actually decent again that's at plus 25. As for uh, attributes required for this one, it's uh, strength of 8, so not very high there. A dexterity of 17, so you do need higher dexterity for this one, but not, not unreachable, I would say. So as far as attaining this weapon goes, uh, you actually get it right here in the round table hold. Up on this balcony, Sorcerer Rogier uh, will be sitting right here, and he will give you this sword after you've completed the uh, Godric the Grafted boss fight. So if you want to do that boss fight, you make your way over here to the uh, Stormvale Castle, and work your way through it until you get to uh, Godric the Grafted way at the end. Once you beat him, you can come back here and Rogier would, will give you this rapier. So it's decently easy to get early in the game. As far as attack on it goes, uh, it's pretty normal for a thrusting weapon. Uh, does obviously high damage. Of, of course, that was a sneak attack, but... Uh, even though it's a thrusting weapon, every once in a while in an attack, sometimes it'll look like it's slashing, but it doesn't. It's it's thrusting. So you can see we have a pretty standard thrust pattern. If you go for a strength attack, it gives you a quick rapid double lunge. As far as two-handed attacks go, uh, since this is from a sorcerer, sorcerer, it shouldn't surprise you that uh, you actually have the advantage of having a magical sword attack that will shoot several swords at your enemy. Uh, so it's actually a pretty dang good weapon. Obviously, a lot of people feel that the thrusting swords are a little bit too light and they don't really like them, but I, I think that they add a pretty fun aspect to the gameplay and are very nice. So, number five, like I said, Rogier's Rapier. Uh, decently easy to get and an excellent weapon. Okay, and so at number four, we have this intricate looking weapon called the Frozen Needle, and this one's obviously based, I would say, almost off a of foil. It's got a full cup hilt, which you gotta love. That's a lot of, that's great hand protection in real life, and it's almost as thin as a foil. But that being said, it's uh, obviously the blade is made out of what appears to be ice. I mean, I would have to assume, given that it's a blade and you can use it to stab people, it's got to be at least crystal or something, but it looks like ice, so it's got a very unique look, and I actually really, really like it. So as far as stats go on this thing, we have a max attack power of 633, so the same as Rogue Gear's Rapier, uh, and we have an average guarded damage negation of 30.6, so actually a little bit lower there. That being said, this one does require uh, 11 strength and 18 dexterity to use effectively. Uh, honestly, I really, really like this sword. It's a lot of fun to use. It's a very quick hit and uh, its special attack is a lot of fun. So uh, as far as where to get this, um, you got to head over to the uh, Lyernia of the Lakes region and make your way over here to the northern Lyernia Lakeshore because you're going to be headed for the King's Realm Ruins. All right, so you can see here we've got a stairs going down. These are initially hidden. You actually have to do a ground attack to open these up. So you have to get to this spot, which is hard to describe. There's this little archway here. Uh, you can see that on the map, that's where I am. I'm way over to the right on these ruins. So there's this archway here and you come over to this spot in between this little raised part and this wall and you do a ground attack. Then once you've opened it up, you just have to go down. There will be a boss fight down here with the uh, uh, royal something or another. A decently easy boss fight for when I did it in the game. And then afterwards, you'll be able to open this door and the sword will be inside this chest. You can see this guy just picked it up. So that is where you get the frozen needle. As far as standard attacks on this one go, again, nothing too over the top and special. Got a pretty standard uh, quick attack. Very rapid lunging speed. And then for the heavy attack, we do actually have a special attack for it. It's uh, It shoots out an ice dart. So you can see here. Of course, I was too far away for that to actually do anything. 
Uh, so a decently powerful ice attack for the heavy attack, uh, which adds a lot of excellent uh, variety as far as range is concerned. And then for a two-handed attack, it's just a really powerful lunge. So uh, that is how you can use the Frozen Needle. Like I said, I greatly enjoy this weapon. All of the rapiers... Uh, have the advantage of being a ridiculously fast stabbing thing, which is great for seizing openings in your enemy's uh, defenses. So that is the frozen ne uh, needle at number four. Let's move on to number three. All right, then at number three, our middle one, we have the s stock So this one is another great weapon. I love this one because of how realistic it is for multiple reasons, one of which being there are actually well-preserved historical examples of swords from this period, uh, specifically s stocks that look almost exactly like this. Again, the blade's a bit thick, but we do have that nice wide cruciform uh, style with the big hilt. So it's uh, a very cool looking sword and it makes an excellent weapon in the game. As far as stats are concerned, we have a max attack power of 639, so a little bit higher than the last two, an average guarded damage negation of 37.6, so that's decently higher. It's actually the highest on this list, which makes sense given the large cross guard. And this one is pretty dang easy to get. For one thing, it is the starting weapon for the prisoner class. So if you start out as the prisoner, you will just have this weapon from the start. Or inversely, if you're like most people and you don't start out as the prisoner class just because it seems to be one of the least popular you can actually get it fairly simply so you make your way over to the Liernia region uh, and you go to the Liernia lakeshore and there you're going to find a traveling merchant and it can actually be purchased from him obviously oh no 3,000 runes yeah, yeah 400 what was I thinking for 3,000 runes you can purchase it from him here so that is uh, where you can get the S stock like I said you can either start with it or you can just buy it rather simply so uh, that is how you get it now this one not being a magical sword doesn't have any special fun attack or anything like that but it is still rather powerful especially like I said in those quick thrusting environments where these swords thrive so well so you can see I just took that guy out with a light attack now we're gonna take this guy with a heavy attack which gives us actually a slash which is definitely interesting and then for this guy we'll do our two-handed attack which is again just that really powerful thrust so uh definitely an excellently balanced sword works really well with the duelist so the other ones had special power attacks, which this one doesn't. Of course, you could add one to it, but uh, I like to pair it with the dagger, so this is one of my favorite combinations for that rapid, you know, fast dueling style, basically. Uh, but with all that in mind, that is the S stock, number three. Let's move on to number two. All right, so at number two, our runner-up, we have the Clean Rot Knight Sword, and now this one is going to look the least like the rest of them, because it's almost probably about the size of an arming sword, like it almost looks about that large, but it does have the smaller profile and I think fits into the class rather well. Uh, and as far as appearances go, I like it. It's got a pretty standard look, doesn't look too unrealistic, so I'm, I'm a fan of this one. As far as stats for this one go, uh, this one has a max attack power of 653, so a nice jump up from the last one. And this one has an average guarded damage negation of 35.6, so uh, definitely not too terrible stats there. As far as attributes required, only 11 strength and 13 dexterity, so pretty attainable, especially for a duelist style build. Uh, and uh, that's all pretty straightforward, so I think this one is great, considering it's pretty easy to get and use early game and has really nice stats. As far as attaining this weapon goes, uh, I haven't found a specific location or a specific boss that drops it 100% of the time, but it is a lootable item from Clean Rot Knights, and the best place to look for them is over here in the, the Aeonia Swamp Shore area of Kaelid. Now, obviously, you can run into these uh, knights elsewhere in this area, but this is the spot where I always find multiples of them, so it's easiest for random loots. So you're going to want to spawn in at the Aeonia Swamp Shore and then make your way towards this cluster over here because there's going to be a couple of them there. Now mind you, these are, as far as standard enemies go, a decently uh, challenging one. So you're going to want to make sure that you're attacking them wisely. And so here you can see we've got a clean rot uh, knight right in front of us. Eeks. And uh, you can see he's wielding the sword. So like I said, obviously, when you're dealing with something like this, you can't expect it to drop all of the time. But uh, if you go to the location that I showed you and just keep spawning there and coming in here and killing them because they will keep respawning, uh, eventually you will be able to get this sword. Again, for this one, we're, you're not going to see a lot of special stuff going on with it. It does have a special two-handed attack that's just a more powerful thrust. Uh, but the quick attack is pretty standard for all of them. It's just a quick lunge. I'll just demonstrate quick. I'll show you the other ones. So here we have uh, the strong attack. Of course, if you hit him, it does more damage. And then we'll do the really strong attack. So that's the two-handed attack it's decently powerful so again this one is just one that yeah doesn't depend on any special gimmicks it's just got 
really high damage for all of its base attacks. So that is the Clean Rot Knight Sword at number two, the runner-up. Let's move on to the number one best thrusting sword in the game. All right, and so for the number one best thrusting sword in the game, we have the Antspur Rapier. And so this one is uh, definitely a real goofy looking one. It's got a pretty standard looking rapier hilt. I mean, it gets a little wide there right at the top. And then it, for some reason, switches over into a multi-tiered door pull style. And then it balances out into what appears to be like the tendril of some sort of a large bug. Just a really weird design for this one. But at first glance, it doesn't look super weird and it looks pretty standard for a rapier, even though it has a lot more curve to it and wiggliness than rapiers typically did. But anyway, as far as stats are concerned for this one, we have a max attack power of 756. So putting it over 100 points higher than the Clean Rot Knight Sword. So this one is definitely by far the best one. As far as the uh, damage negation goes, we have an average guarded damage negation of 31.6. So it's not the highest on this list, but it's also not the lowest. As far as attributes required, it's 10 strength and 20 dexterity. So 20 dexterity is can be decently high and, you know, hard to attain early on, but this isn't really an early location that you can find this. So those are pretty reasonable stats, I would say, for this weapon. As far as attaining this weapon, uh, you know, actually finding it goes, you loot it off of the body of uh, Melee Marais, uh, who is the shad uh, Shaded Castle Castellan. And you can find that person up here in this field to the west of the Shaded Castle. So here we're at the Shaded Castle. Just to show you where that is, over here is the capital region, then over here we have Mount Galmir. Uh, to get here, you actually have to uh, follow this path that comes through this center part. And then once you do, you just head that direction to the west. There's a field over there and the Castellan will attack you because it, uh, he is hostile. And once you've killed him, you get the sword. So as far as this one goes, we've got a pretty standard stuff for a rapier just obviously much more powerful so our quick attack is going to look a lot like that where we twist up and jab then for the heavy attack we're just going to have a more aggressive jab oh and of course we were too far away but anyway that is thrusting weapons so now <laughs> now hopefully you've uh, seen everything there is to see regarding thrusting weapons and if you're someone that wants to play this style you'll be able to now. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you liked this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.